another episode of Adventures in Welding. I'm Paul. Thanks for joining me. First of all, please pardon the fan sound in the background. It is steamy, muggy hot here in the Ohio Valley area. In fact, it's so hot I'm wearing this Arc Chill Beanie from uh, Blue Demon Welding. The way this thing works is you moisten it with water, shake it like that, and stick it on your dome. And supposedly, it'll keep you cool. We'll see how well it does today. Anyway, today this is part two of our uh, basic fabrication uh, series. We've got some rectangular tube, some square tube. We're going to talk about uh, a couple of joints that you might be seeing and how to cap off your tubes for a nice professional look. That's enough of my lift flapping. Let's get started. Let's make some sparks. <clears throat> Alright folks, this um, this is about inch and a half by two and a half inch box tubing. Looks like about a eighth inch wall thickness. Anyway, this is used for a lot of structural stuff. Um, I-beams, small I-beams and stuff for building temporary uh, floors, walkways, stuff like that. Also uses a lot in uh, bumper building, things like that. Anyway, the joint that we're going to be talking about today is what I like to call a square flange joint where that you're going to be asked to weld a piece of square tubing onto a plate such as that. Imagine if you will that we've got this here such as a wall or something and we're going to add a joist across it like this. So that's the first joint we're going to tackle today. We're going to hit this with some flux core. We're going to start off by tacking it and then we're going to hit it up with a three bead fillet weld. Alright folks, we are ready to tack this bad boy up. And the first thing I'm going to do is use a little magnet here to help hold it in place at a nice 90 degree angle. And you can see we've got our ground clamp on there. It's always better to have your ground clamp on the work than on the table. It lessens the chances of you receiving an electrical shock and it makes for a better ground. So let's get some tacks in here and see what we got to see. Always with this type of welding you want to start with a nice clean piece of wire. So I'm going to start by putting a little tack right here. It's like we got a whisker there. Not an auspicious start. Take off our magnet. You want to check that for square and we'll put the tack on the opposite side. Then we'll tack the two remaining sides. Clean off our tacks and we're ready to weld. Alright, as you can see we've got our tacks nice and cleaned off and we're going to begin our first bead. Want to keep that wire at a 45 degree angle in there and wrap around the corner.
right, our first root pass is in there. Now we'll begin the first layer of the three bead fillet, starting down on the base plate and trying to cover about half of the bead. Right, now we're going to tie those sec the first and second bead into the actual base metal. Alright folks, so we've got our, our box tubing welded in there pretty good. And now the next thing we're going to talk about is if we were asked to add a cross piece. As if we were doing some sort of a joist like we had talked about before. So basically we're going to have two separate types of joints, four separate welds. We're going to have two fillets and two square bevel groove welds. Now just for fun we're going to switch up the process on this one and we are going to stick weld these. We'll be using some Lincoln Electric 7018 330 second welding rods at about 85 or so amps. Let me get that set up and we'll come back and do her. Alright, I've got her tacked in place and I'm going to weld it out. We're going to weld it as it lays. Because if this were a structural member in a building or something, you would not be able to move it. Let's clean it up. Alright folks, there's our finished weld on the top part. And now let's talk about the edges. Let's say that the drawing shows, you know, this piece running off this way. But this piece here needs to extend, say, two inches past that and be capped. So that's the last thing we're going to look at today is capping that. And we'll cut out a cap piece with the plasma cutter. All right, we're getting ready to cut out some of the end cap pieces here. And uh, we want to make sure you got the right size tip on your plasma torch. This is really thin stuff. 
cutting it at about 20 amps so I got my 15 to 25 amp tip on check out mechanic 416 on eBay really good prices on your plasma consumables We have completed our little test project. We've got our 3D fillet weld anchoring the box tubing to the plate. We've got our combination fillet weld, bevel groove weld on this T joint. And we have capped off the front end of this for a neater finish and also to add some strength in the crush direction. I want to say this tubing. Uh, was provided by OnlineMetals.com. Check them out for all your metal needs. And the good old um, Art Cool Beanie. I give it about a C plus so far. Maybe it actually needs some airflow over it. And there's there's really no airflow down here in the uh, secret welding layer deep beneath Metropolitan Toronto, Ohio. Um, plasma cutting consumables. Mechanic 416 on eBay, George's Plasma Cutting Shop. Check them all out. Questions, comments, always welcome. Please share. Please like. If you haven't seen it yet, we've got a giveaway going on on the Facebook page, Adventures in Welding. When we reach 500 viewers, we're going to give away two uh, Argon CO2 regulators. Woo! I know it ain't, it ain't much, but it's something, and it's free. You like free, don't you? All you got to do is subscribe to this channel. If you're already subscribed, heck, get a friend to subscribe because we're going to pick the winners from all subscribers. So, until I see you again, keep your hood down, keep making sparks. I'll see you later.